السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد أما بعد Brothers and sisters, we're living in a, a world of contradiction, double standards, two-faced hypocrisy. That's what we're living in. And those are the times in which we are all struggling. Seriously, genuinely struggling. And that behavior, it seems that everybody's accusing everybody else of being guilty of. And I could only imagine how difficult it is for you, how difficult it is for you to sort this out and figure this out and understand who's right and who's wrong, who's promoting the truth, who's promoting falsehood, who's uh, having issues with others for personal reasons and who's having them for ideological, religious, methodological reasons. I could only imagine that a lot of you are genuinely torn and you get swayed depending on how eloquent the presenter of the ideas is. And surely people can influence, influence you with their speech, the way they construct the sentences, the way they deliver their uh, sarcastic behavior, their delivery, there are a lot of elements involved in persuasion where you get persuaded with an opinion because of the presenter. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, there's, that speech is a type of magic. So no doubt it is difficult for you. But my brothers and sisters, you have an obligation to set aside the person's presentation skills and focus on the substance and the content. I want to mention a few things. Number one, before you get excited and say, Brother, uh, all you do is reaction videos. All you do is speak about other Muslims. I will say, Habibi, you must have missed the tafsir class we had earlier. And you might probably miss the Arba'in in Nawawiyah, which we will have tomorrow, inshallah. And those are weekly classes. Every Friday, 1.30 p.m. Mecca time. And if you don't know what, that, what time it would be in your uh, zone, all you have to do is go on Google. Let's say you live in Sydney. Say, uh, type on Google, 1.30 p.m. Mecca in Sydney. And it will actually give you what time that would be in Sydney. So, please join the Tafsir class and the Arba'in Nawi class, which are weekly on Friday and Saturday at 1.30 p.m. So you could see what exactly does One Way to Paradise offer to the people. What are we offering the people? We're offering the people authentic knowledge of Islam. Straight from the scholars, all that we do is translate and facilitate. Translate and facilitate. Bring the point closer to home. Mention, mention contemporary examples. Yani, make it easier for you to comprehend and understand the statements of the scholars. It is not my subjective, philosophical, uh, well-articulated opinion on the matter, which is what you will find on other channels. So please, please, before you go crazy, join a class. If you don't like it, like some people say, I, I can't stand your voice. No problem. Barakallah feek. Don't. Join a class once. Give it a chance. You just might find it beneficial. You might find it beneficial, inshallah. And th there's a playlist that has everything that you've missed. So if you feel bad that you've missed all the suwar we've covered or all the uh, aqid al wasitiyah which we covered from cover to cover, mashallah, tabarakallah, the entire book with the Sharh of Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih bin Uthaymeen, al aqid al wasitiyah al Sheikh Rasab bin Taymiyyah, an excellent book for, for aqidah. All of it is in English. You could go to the playlist and watch the entire thing and basically be up to date with, with what's going on. That's disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two. Uh, what do you want from Daniel? Get off his case. Look man. We actually were not on his case. 
the majority of us were, were mining our business, scenario A, we were mining our business, scenario B, or phase, phase one, phase two, we were in touch with him, a number of us, the same people that he's calling right now, all these names, as you will see momentarily, inshallah. We were in touch with him privately, trying to sort out those fundamental differences that we have on the matter of uh, rulership in Islam, rights of the ruler, criticizing the ruler publicly, and inciting uh, khuruj, which he denies. Nevertheless, those were the topics being discussed. And I believe all of us, the people that he criticizes, the ones I know of, of myself, Omar Shatila, Sajid Lipam, we all basically reached that, a dead end in this regard. And because uh, some had uh, promoted him, like Sajid, had him on his channel, had videos with him, when he realized the gravity of the matter, and that this is uh, an issue of aqidah that is not uh, trivial, it is not secondary by any means, then Sajid had to do what is necessary. Sadly, the people don't believe that people have affiliation for the sake of Allah and disassociation for the sake of Allah. They think everything is personal. Everything is personal. People that don't fear Allah, a lot of these people online, and you will see, you will see his, his, his fans. The, the <laughs> I watched uh, uh, this re six hour reaction video. Allahu Akbar. Six hour reaction video. It is to show you the, the uh, insanity of the followers. And some people were loving it. Six hours. Saying, oh, I could do 10 hours. I've done 11 hours. Pr doesn't even pray. Some of these people don't even pray. Allahu Alam. Just watching 11 hours of, of a reaction video. Then you have people come on, a, on an actual, uh, yani, proper reaction video. Say, Akhi, 20 minutes, you could have done it in two. Look at the, the, the double standards. It's all about fanboying. So when someone hates me, when I did the Nu'man Ali Khan video, someone who's a Nu'man Ali Khan fan straight up came on the channel and said, man, you talk too much. You could have, this video, you could have made it, made it in five minutes, but you made it 20 minutes. 20 minutes or 30 minutes was too much for him. Meanwhile, when you're uh, uh, cheering for someone, six hours, mashallah, tabarakallah, brother, barakallah, feek. next time make it 10. <laughs> so is it really that you have a, a low attention, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever they call it, span, or is it that you're just, uh, either you hate someone or you love someone. So people don't realize that Sajid had to disassociate from him. And then I, myself, uh, uh, even though these, they see the irony is, Sajid will dismiss me, like, uh, not Sajid, I'm sorry, Danielle will dismiss me like I'm, I'm insignificant, just like Suhaib Webb uh, dismissed him as being insignificant, even though he sees himself to be relevant. And so I see myself to be relevant because I've been doing this and dealing with this way before all of these brothers came to the scene. And it's not about a competition about who's the OG, who's the old school one, who's the older one. But these are, these are facts. These are facts. Seniority has its value in Islam and in the world, in the business world, in the modern world, and anywhere in the world. The age is a factor when you're older than uh, people whether you look it or not is irrelevant is a factor and how long you've been doing something you experience is, is a factor this has been my field by Allah's grace and mercy and from among the first people to be on YouTube way before these individuals came into the scene so no one has a right to say you are involved or not involved I am involved because I'm also being attacked so I'm going to my second point here which is now that we've reached phase two and we had these discussions with brother Daniel and we hit a, a, a brick wall. Then the confrontation began and believe it or not, we are reciprocating and retaliating to his vicious attacks, not the other way around. So if you're telling me, why are you so bothered? Why do you keep doing reacting, reaction videos? Or why are you still, why do you, you know, why is he living, as they say, rent-free in your head? First of all, there's no flat in my head for someone to live, not with money, not rent-free. But I am concerned because this brother continues to slander us and continues to attack us on regular basis. In his reaction videos, on his Twitter, everywhere I go on his Telegram, my name, Sajid's name, Omar Shatila's name, Abdurrahman from Knowledge North's name, these people are being mentioned by name. 
ironically, he will pull a Suhaib web stunt and not want to mention my name in this particular video as you will see right now, which is which is really strange, but otherwise he has no mention, no problem mentioning me and, and uh, Faris al-Hamadi by name as being bootlicking agents. So why am I doing this? Because a lot of you, as happened today by Allah's grace, a lot of you don't know the actual narrations from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding this issue. Why does he keep creating this why is he adding the madkhalis quote unquote into the into the field of the people that he is fighting with so he's created these two camps the compassionate imams on one side and the madkhalis on the other side and basically we're all working together to eradicate sharia this is an actual tweet that this person said madkhalis supposedly madkhalis which are salafis we call ourselves salafis and i don't even like the term salafi i use it as an adjective not as a proper noun Salafis who are all about Sharia are supposedly trying to eradicate Sharia so when these lies continue to happen people get deceived so they they deserve the right to know now let me be very clear I believe and I am not trying to do this issue of muwazana which is mentioned the good and the bad, but genuinely speaking, had Daniel not been so off and oppressive in regards to the so-called madkhalis being bootlickers, he would have been considered to have done one heck of a job in dismantling and destroying Suhaib Webb, the deviant, Sufi, Ash'ari, useless Imam. I genuinely believe we should all wake up tomorrow and find that he has zero subscribers, zero followers, and he should be, his, his, his imama should be taken away from him, his shahada from Al-Azhar University should be stripped away from him, and he should just open a falafel shop uh, in Texas or wherever he lives. He doesn't live in Texas. I don't know where he lives. He should open a falafel shop and leave this da'wah business to the people that actually give da'wah. I have to say that this video, long video, was on point, was on point in regards to destroying Suhaib Webb and, ex and exposing his double standards, his lies, his hypocrisy. It was, it was out of this world. So here, here to show you the justice that we seek. But it cannot be free from... A grave mistake that Daniel continues to fall into that discredits him and it affects his credibility and it takes away from these efforts that we all at some point had appreciated. All of us, not speaking of myself and some of the dua that I know, had appreciated his, his exp uh, expose of these, uh, uh, you know, Yasser Qadi, Omar Sulaiman, Suhaib Webb. Suhaib Webb is rather recent. All these people, we were like, no problem. Uh, liberalism, feminism, uh, atheism, Madri Ish. Command, we were saying, thumbs up, no problem. Jazakallah khairan, you're doing a great job for the Ummah. Then, because no one is infallible, and because the shaitan has to get a piece of you, the shaitan has to have a share, he caught him in the area where he is least knowledgeable because he is well versed in, in you know, debating and, 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 you know, doing his research with his team. Obviously, he has a team and he keeps asking for more money for him and his team, mashallah, tabarakallah, to continue to prosper. But uh, uh, in the area of Islamic knowledge and ta'seel al-ilmi, ta'seel al-ilmi, the fundamental foundational knowledge that you learn, which begins with the Arabic language. And no, Arabic is not that you're able to say Arabic words here and there, like you hear an Arabic word and you, you understand what it means. No, Arabic is being able to speak the Arabic language and being able to read an entire book from cover to cover and understand technically 99% or 98% of the book.
you might struggle with a couple of words so you need a you know a, a, a qamus a, a dictionary for you to to pull out these meanings other than that you should understand if you don't have that there's no way on planet earth or jupiter that you have the ta'seel al-ilmi that will uh, allow you to discuss the matters of khuruj and the matter of uh, tabdi and the matter of takfir you you're just not qualified so until now we don't know what his capabilities are and uh, while people are criticizing our brother Sajid for his Western pronunciation, it's not like Daniel is any better. Have you ever heard him say Subhanallah? Have you heard how he says Subhanallah? Or how he says Inkar Munkar? Inkaro Munkar? So if I'm going to be, uh, uh, you know, like those uh, Bradford uh, uh, Diobandi, uh, f you know, funny guys, then I could also pull, pull him, which they will never do, by the way. They will never come and, and make fun of that. They will make fun of me because I am their enemy. But this is their fellow Diobandi, who is, you know, a big fanboy of Dioband. So, of course, they will, he will be off the hook. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. It's not politics at all. No, 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 no. And speaking about Da'wah Mafia, it's not like they don't have their own Da'wah Mafia. You see, the, the funny thing is the entire video, he speaks about the Da'wah Mafia dismissing his own Da'wah Mafia. The Da'wah Mafia of Muhammad Hijab and Ali Da'wah and, and uh, Daniel Hakikachu and uh, uh, Brother Haji and the Dio Bandis from uh, All Islam Productions as though these are not the Da'wah Mafia in their own way. Who are also, uh, you know, on the attack against Salafis and Madkhalis, you know, SP files and all the stuff that they have on there. And, you know, this guy who's constantly calling everybody a bootlicker, which he might have learned or taught to Brother Haji. Allahu Alam what's happening behind the scenes. But it's not like, we, it's not like they don't have their own Da'wah Mafia. Who are the only people without really a Da'wah Mafia? Us. Who they will still say we are a mafia. They say you, Sajid, Umar, Satila, blah, 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 are all, you know, mafia. That's just the way it is. So if they're claiming that there's a da'wah mafia there, then they are their own mafia with the same exact characteristics and traits as the people that they are criticizing. So, uh, hello. It's a wake-up call. So be alert. And understand what's going on. So, uh, we don't, he doesn't have the asl, the ta'seel al-ilmi lil-bahth fi hadhihi al-masail fadlan an al-kalam wa al-tawassu' wa al-ifta' aslan huwa fi majal al-ifta' he gives fatawa in his reaction video he made takfir already of whoever he wanted to make takfir of he was reluctant at times and then he just he got a scourge from his mashallah tabarakallah amazing fans who are among the vilest most disgusting of people in terms of their choice of words they they gave him the courage and the boost you know with these super chats six hours i don't know i don't know how many super chats one will get in six hours of, of a reaction video and then sure enough the takfir was made against fulan and fulan and you know this guy lupe who's a who's a loser but the scholars will be very reluctant to do takfir before iqamat al hujja and iqamat al hujja as sheikh al-sam tamir had mentioned and others, Iqamat al hujja is not done by a tweet. Like you tweet a, a line and then this Lupe replies with a tweet and you say, Aqamt al hujja alayh, fuhuwa kafir billah. Ya rajal, look, the scholars will think a million times before they pass takfir. But these are the takfiris. They read a few tweets, khalas, the guy is outside of deen of the Islam. He denied jinn. He denies the existence of jinn, which is, a, which is an element of kufr. No doubt, you deny jinn, you don't believe in the Quran because it's in the Quran. There's a surah called Surah Al Jinn. Yet, the, the hujjah has to be established against this person and explain to him. Then, after he rejects, you could say, Okay, you're a kafir. Until then, a tweet does not ca count as iqamat al hujjah. It requires a learned person who can sit with this person and go back and forth and explain to him with multiple evidences someone who is qualified. A lot of these guys are, who are on Twitter are underqualified. So long story short, Daniel had to ruin his amazing effort in dismantling and dissecting and destroying those Western du'at by taking a jab on us, at us, and by continuing to slander and uh, call us names and really, yani, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, 
you, you, Wiley and Daniel, I'm speaking to you. Whether you watch the videos or not is besides the point because we can tell from your video that maybe you didn't even watch my video, which was mentioned to you right now as I will play. But I'm speaking to you if it ever reaches you or someone delivers it to you. I'm speaking to you. Yeah, Daniel. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Relax. And don't waste those efforts by transgressing. If you are not qualified. And please know and admit and acknowledge within yourself, in your own room, without anyone being there to, to you know, blow your head and, 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 and expand it so that you think it's bigger than what it is. I don't mean by blow your head, you know, someone shooting you. I mean someone giving you nonsense. And Because the people, the, the, the followers don't help. The followers with their praise and their appreciation, they make you think that you are, you know, you are the, the mujaddid and you are the, uh, the lion of Allah and you are the sword of Allah and you are Khalid bin Walid. Relax, Habibi. These people, are, these people are in a moment of emotionalism. They type whatever they type. Don't, don't be fooled by the hype of the followers. These followers, wallahi, they are detrimental to the da'wah. May Allah guide them. 90% of the problems we have among the du'at, like Mufti Mank and Nu'man Ali Khan, is these, is these heedless and brainless followers who are constantly praising them and telling them things that make them think that has not, had it not been for them, the, the whole ummah would have gone to Jahannam. So now they reach a point where they think that they are, mashallah, tabarakallah, yani, the, uh, uh, almost a prophet, almost a prophet. Don't let these people fool you, bro. You know your limits. I don't know who you learned this matter of Aqidah from. I don't know who taught you the matters of Al-Hukam wa ma yata'allak bil-Hukam wa huquq al-Hukam wa al-takfir fil Islam wa al-khuruj wa kull al-tafasil. Ma adri. Man al-lazhi a'lamak? Wa ala ayy asas? Ala ayy asas tata'adda? Wa tata'tawal? على المسلمين وتسميهم أسامي لا تليق على أي أساس إذا لم تكن تفهم ما أقول فوالله تلك مصيبة وإن كنت تفهم ما أقول فأفق من نومك واستيقظ ولا تكن من الظالمين No need to translate those who don't know, those who don't know, it's an evidence for you that you need to go learn before you run your mouth and you tweet all day. So you don't have the qualification, just like Suhaib Webb doesn't have the qualification, to be addressing certain issues. I'm telling you, Habibi, don't waste your good deeds and your efforts in calling out and exposing those deviant uh, Western uh, du'at by uh, transgressing and oppressing fellow Muslims who definitely are not what you're claiming. Wallahi, 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 you are oppressing your fellow Muslims. You are oppressing us whether you realize it or not. If you don't realize it, it's a disaster. If you realize it, it's a double disaster. If you're saying that they double down when they're confronted with the truth, then let it be known that you're also doubling down when you're being confronted with the truth. So before we go into some of these details, Let's play this video and see how my reaction video was brought up and then he did not want to mention my name. So this is talking about someone making a response video, Brother Adib. This is my response video to his initial, uh, you know, that f for that video he's playing there, which is his confrontation with the uh, uh, Imam, Imam rapper. Uh. Yeah, this is a loser, Madkhali. <laughs> He's just a hater. Okay, so this is, uh, th this is it. First of all, he doesn't want to mention my name. It's a super chat, which he usually will, will post on his, uh, on his screen. I didn't qualify. I didn't qualify in that reaction video to, be, uh, to the name to appear on the screen, nor was my name mentioned. Now, he was wondering at the end, that why did Suhaib Webb, when he made his video, his ap apology video, he said he was already slandering him for, you know, not mentioning his name. And he started making, you know, of course, you know how he's a, he's a big actor, uh, you know, the I Iranian actor who's, you know, they're calling him and he's calling supposedly the other uh, shuyukh are calling him. Hey, don't mention Daniel's name. Don't mention his name. And then like 
Two minutes later, Suhaib Web says, Daniel. He's like, oh, oh, he mentioned my name at least once. He actually mentioned his name at least twice, but he didn't even hear the first one. I heard the first one. So, <laughs> which is a burnout because he just finished making a big fuss of like, ah, oh, he doesn't want to mention his name and all these other, you know, Yasser Qadi and Umar calling him and telling him in private, hey, make sure you don't mention him. Basically, don't give him any more coverage or any more attention. And then the dude mentions Daniel's name. So if, but he, he actually took offense that uh, uh, Suhaib Web wouldn't mention his name and then he does exactly what he's criticizing Suhaib Web for, which is not wanting to mention my name. Supposedly, why? Well, it's funny. Oh no, I'm a loser, Madkhali. I'm a loser, Madkhali. So that, just calling names. Why am I a loser? Allahu Alam. What, are the, what is the uh, yardstick? What is the yardstick according to you for uh, evaluating someone being a winner or a loser? Allahu alam. Khalas, I'm just a loser. A according to his standard, I'm a loser. No problem, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Bootlicker, I will forgive you regarding the loser. How am I going to forgive you regarding the bootlicker? How am I going to forgive you regarding the bootlicker when I have absolutely nothing to do with that? I will mention the hadith later, but yeah, yeah, akhi, fear Allah, yeah, akhi, fear Allah. I don't understand how. I don't understand how to communicate this to this person. Like, what do we have to tell him so he can get it through a stick head? You see, we are facing the same issue he is facing. He, 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 in the video, he was baffled. He was baffled at how could Suhaib Web like literally lie through his teeth and play ping pong and switch up and change and twist words and go out of his way to, to, you know, with all kinds of semantics to appear to be innocent and wallahi, you are doing the same thing and we feel the same way. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. Exactly what you're accusing of, you are doing to us. We're wondering what in the world, what does this guy want? How, when you make a tweet, you know, a meme of like supposedly Ninja Turtles with I don't know who, if these are Madkhalis meeting with FBI agents in, in front of Rand. It's like, we're like, who are you talking to? What are you talking about? Like, okay, you want to include me when? When did I meet an agent? I'm not even in America and I'm not related to anything with any government. I'm a solo man on my own. What are you saying? What are you saying? And how could you play around with the people and mess around with them and fool them and they believe you? So anyways, uh, I'm a loser madkhali. Is that this guy that you have in your, in your uh, super chat, I don't want to mention his name because I don't want to promote these losers. <laughs> I don't want to mention his name because I'm like, Suhaib, stop. I can literally call you Imam, Imam Suhaib Web, Imam Daniel Hakikachu. Stop. Exactly what you were criticizing Suhaib of doing, you're doing, you don't want to promote me. So why are you even mentioning my name in your tweets and in your telegram? Or, or is the promotion uh, seasonal? Ah, it wasn't Ramadan season or I don't know, whatever you, Christmas season. Is it, is it, what season do you follow? The Islamic calendar, uh, the, the Gregorian calendar? What, what are the seasons or the occasions for uh, let's promote, let's not promote. Let's mention by name, let's not mention by name. So, you know what, today you just, uh, you had uh, your, a bad coffee, not enough sugar in your coffee. There was not enough sugar in your coffee or what, you, uh, you didn't get to uh, pray duha. What was your problem for you to decide that today you don't want to promote me, but there you are after me and after others. After others, and I don't, I don't take pride in that. It's, it's actually disgusting. Like many people are saying, like, guys, can you stop? And I wish we could stop. Wallahi, I wish we could stop. I'm not like those, I'm not like a sectarianist. I've never been. As much as I love Salafiyya, I've never, I've never adopted Salafiyya as a sect. I've never had this kind of, you know, the, this, this approach that some have where it's black and white with them. I hope and pray you know, that Allah guides all of the du'at so we can all, you know, work together to revive this ummah. That's just, that's just my approach. That's my wish. Something I believe you wish for as well. But are you doing anything about it? No, you think everybody's at war with you. You're creating enemies that don't exist. You have real enemies. You have imaginary, fictitious enemies. We are your imaginary, fictitious enemies who in real life don't exist. So today, or yesterday, I was not worthy of being promoted. Uh, but uh, this guy was a big critic of 
uh, Soheib Webb was a big critic of this Madkhali loser. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Thank you so much for your kind words. So, Suhaib Webb is a big critic of this Madkhali loser. So, loser Madkhali, Madkhali loser. So, we have both, يعني, both uh, uh, attempts, whichever word you prefer first. Uh, back in the day. And that's what the video I played you in the, in the first part of the live stream was talking about. Ironically, that video title, which a lot of you did not see, the video title on top was Suhaib Webb refutes Abu Musa'ab Wajdi Akkari. But the font was too small that y'all couldn't, couldn't see it. That video was Suhaib stunned back then. And I didn't have the privilege to be living in the States and to go to his face and tell him because he's 6'5 and he's got his fly shoes on that you are al -bida. I didn't have that privilege to do it. But Alhamdulillah, Daniel did it and he, <laughs> he mopped the floor with him. Rightfully. Because Suhaib Webb needs to be to have the floor mopped with him but that's another discussion about oh he's not man enough to face me he's not man enough to face me he, he just has his comments off on his youtube page um so i was referring to this bootlicker <laughs> and now so that's within um, within a span of minute that's three bootlickers two losers Zakallahu khairan now this bootlicker is a four attacking the guy who's attacking sohaib webb so the, the bootlicker is attacking, which is Daniel, the guy who's attacking Suhaib Webb. Did you actually watch the video? In the video, I attacked both of you, if you want to call it an attack. Did, it's one of two things. Either you watched the video, so you realized that I was actually fair and that I brought some solid points against you, which is the fact that you don't focus on Aqeedah, you don't speak about the fact that he was an Ash'ari, Sufi, uh, that you don't address the matter of Diobandi, uh, Diobandism and the belief of the Diobandis, the fact that you dismiss more core fundamental matters. Either you watched my video and you knew that it was problematic, and so you did not want any of your followers to be aware of it and therefore go watch it and then have some thoughts and ideas that, oh, oh, we need to reconsider. Maybe this Abu Musab is not just a hater. Maybe he's actually a genuine person trying to, you know, arrive at the truth. Maybe he's really trying to promote virtue. So either there's two options. Either you watch the video, you knew it was going to bring some heat or it would influence some of your followers because I'm just trying to knock some sense into people. I'm just trying to reason with them. I'm trying to rationalize. I'm trying to bring textual evidences so that we can all have a, you know, a common, a common ground. Maybe you didn't want that. Or option B, you didn't watch the video and you are doing exactly what Suhaib Webb have been doing this whole time. Just saying things without any accountability, without any research. So you see how you're saying it went a full circle and you just went a full circle. You did exactly what Suhaib Webb was doing. If you watched my video, then you knew that I had valid points. You are purposely hiding it from your followers. Therefore, you chose not to mention my name and not to promote me, ironically, when you have promoted me in the past. Or you didn't watch the video, so you don't even know what I said. You just saw the title and you assumed from the video that I went attacking you without attacking Suhaib Web. When I actually criticized both of you and I said some good things about you. I said some good things about you. So... You see, Daniel, you see how what goes around comes around and you see how uh, a zulum, zulumat, yawm al qiyamah, that oppression will be darknesses on the day of judgment and that not only on the day of judgment, in the dunya, when you wrong and oppress people, it will come around eventually, just like Suhaib Webb, subhanallah, he ran away, he ran all these years, all these years untouched. With all his garbage and nonsense and drama and subhanallah, his time came for him to crash into the wall. And who was the wall he crashed into? You. And I think his da'wah career should end. If anyone invites him afterwards, they must be absolutely ludicrous, uh, you know, uh, brainless people. He has nothing to offer the, the community. Not the African-American community because obviously it doesn't even connect with them at this point with this fake ghetto uh, behavior. Not the uh, uh, white community because you don't even know what he is at this point. And since he makes fun of, you know, other nationalities, he's, he should be canceled everywhere. But then again, are you actually following his footsteps? Are you concerned that you could be following his footsteps and then the same thing that happened to him might eventually happen to you if you continue to do what he's doing? Either you watched the video, you don't want the people to hear the truth, or you didn't watch the video, you dismissed me, 
and said, I'm a loser, madkhali, and that I'm not worthy of anything, and that I am attacking you without even knowing what I actually said in the video. Be careful. I'm just going to say be careful. So things come full, full circle in interesting ways. Yeah. Uh, brother or someone. Okay, so we don't care about that. Now, let's, let's, let me just show you, before I show you the tweets, his tweet against us and some of the evidences against him, uh, let me show you the despicable uh, behavior. I mean, guys, if you watch, okay, 1.2 thousand people watching, these people do not stop chatting at all. I don't understand how does he even speak while everybody's busy just fighting and bickering and talking trash and smack and, and takfiring people left and right. These are, this is the fruit of his efforts. The fruit of his efforts primarily are, are reckless, brainless uh, uh, individuals that have absolutely no problem saying anything under the sun for the sake of saying it just so they can get some uh, recognition. Maybe some of his followers are reasonable people that are actually looking for the truth or people who truly appreciate his, you know, uh, resistance against the feminists and the liberalists and whatever. But most of his followers are unbelievably vile, disgusting people. And if I were him, at least once, at least once, six hour stream, Ya Abdullah, at least once I would say, Ya Akhwan, fear Allah. If you come to my tafsir class, if people chat during the class, I stop the class. So the people can learn the adab and the manners of, of discussing Islamic knowledge. Not even once does he even advise these people. I, I mean, where do I begin? Look at this guy. Blair Imani should will, should will be a concubine when the Khilafah comes back. <laughs> Suhaib Webb thinks Muslim women should be in Playboy magazines. We understand that. That's not the one I wanted to uh, uh, comment on. I wanted to comment on this one. Huh? Blair Imani should be a concubine when the Khilafah comes back. Uh, Yasser Qadi and Omar Sulaiman are proud gay and they love lesbians. Like how? How? How, how do these people not fear Allah to this point? And how, how does Daniel not even bother to even advise them even once in their lives? Rather than advising them, he defends every mockery he's ever done. It is so disgusting that he went back to the video of the uh, of Ghani girl who was crying and he re-enacted the whole thing even more dramatic than the first one to double down on the fact that he wants to mock those videos for the greater purpose of, you know, protecting the Muslims from being bombed by, you know, these foreign countries. Not paying attention to the fact that there's an actual uh, innocent girl who's being mocked. While we understand the greater objective, you are dismissing other elements that you as a Muslim, you're not allowed to dismiss. If you want to uh, deliver the idea that girls' tears are being used to promote you know, the foreign attacks on Muslim countries, you can do it in a million ways. You don't have to cry like a girl and act like a girl, which is haram, by the way. It's haram for you to behave like a woman. It's haram for men to imitate women and for women to imitate men, even if you're acting. And acting is haram in and of itself because you're acting, you're lying. So there's no justification there whatsoever. You use memes with drawn images, which is haram. And I admit, I uh, retweeted uh, a meme that had some cartoon characters. I should have avoided it. But his is like a picture of Yasser Qadi, a picture of some, I don't know, weird, uh, you know, alphabet people. Haram. These are all haram things that he has no problem in, in, in you know, uh, promoting. No problem in promoting. You want to deliver the message. Do you really have to act like a woman and cry like a little girl and, and, and make fun of this girl because supposedly you have this noble objective behind it and do your followers even understand do they have any any uh, ilm of al masalih wal mafasid ودرء المفاسد مقدم على جلب المصالح وسد الذرائع do they even know these words and these usul and do they even understand any of this no look at your followers man look at the followers and look at the words that these people are using they don't know any better and you don't teach them either you don't teach them you don't educate them you allow them to continue you justify mocking almost unrestricted 
so that you can continue doing what you're doing. What was this one here? Look at the lies. Sheikh Tsuki, Brother Sajid calls you an us kafir. What should we do about it? What? When? When did Brother Sajid ever call anyone of these people a kafir? Has he ever said that Daniel is a kafir? No. He actually is reluctant. He was reluctant to even call you a, a, a khariji. I'm the one who called you a khariji. So this is insane. This is insane. These, this is the, just as an example of his followers. Why? They're ignorant. And if you're wafaqidu shay, la yu'ti. The one who doesn't possess something cannot give it to others. If their teacher is ignorant, what do you think they're going to be? Ignorant. What are they all knowledgeable about? Oh, exposing the Western du'at, uh, doing research, um, you know, f fighting uh, feminists and fighting, you know, secularists and fighting, I don't know, all these ideologies. They're all, mashallah, tabarakallah, became shuyukh and mashayikh and ulama in this area. But does any one of them actually know the Arabic language, understand aqidah, know Quran, know sunnah? Nope. No. He doesn't know and neither do they. So, let's go. So he made this tweet. He made this tweet. Uh, the compassionate imams and madkhalis cooperate to completely eradicate the sharia. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Kabira ya rajal. Ittaqillah. Ya Abdullah. Ittaqillah. Ya Sheikh. If you want to call us madkhalis, which we don't even acknowledge this term. Yani we don't even acknowledge this term at all. But assuming that there was such a thing as madkhali, okay, uh, let's make it synonymous with the term Salafi or Wahhabi or whatever other term. Yeah, yeah Abdullah, we want to eradicate Sharia. The, our whole life is promoting Sharia in our durus, in our class, everywhere we go. If there are certain people in charge who are doing something contrary to that, and we are obeying the Prophet ﷺ in terms of how to deal with them. That means that now we, we ourselves, want to eradicate the Sharia. You don't fear Allah in these regards, man. And I'm warning you in your face, by Allah, if you don't repent and change what happened to Suhaib and Yasir Qadi and those guys will eventually happen to you. Mark my words. And I'm not talking about your personal life or my personal life. Allah could decree that in my personal life, I go astray one day. Or I get exposed one day. Ah, that, that personal life or your personal life. Even if they caught you with whatever. None of my business. Wallahi, I'm not referring to that. So we can be clear with the disclaimer. I'm not talking about anybody's per personal private matters and all this doxing I'm against. Anything regarding your family I'm against. So we can be clear. But in terms of your da'wah, then what happened to Suhaib Webb will eventually happen to you if you don't change. They do this by distorting the traditional concept of rahmah, adab, and khuruj. The compassionate imams say, don't judge, criticize ordinary Muslims for violating the sharia. Ah, that is lack of rahmah. Agreed. Uh, example, don't judge, criticize ordinary Muslims for listening to haram music. Agreed. The compassionate imam say, don't judge, criticize Muslim religious scholars for violating the sharia. Ah, that is a lack of adab. Agreed. Example, don't judge, criticize religious scholars for legitimating Muslim women appearing in pornographic magazines. Agreed. However, I would like to add that sometimes, sometimes all of us, maybe especially you, you really lack adab in the way you criticize them. Like towards the end of the video, you were calling this guy everything. Yeah, donkey, yeah, himar, yeah, kalb, yeah. I don't know what else you said. Like, okay. Like, okay, you can be upset, but for you to actually go, ya ahmaq, you call them ya ahmaq, yani that, that's a little too much, no? So you can acknowledge that while you want to criticize them, that sometimes you really like adab, uh, Daniel. Come on now. The madkhalis, now here, here comes our turn. The madkhalis say, don't judge, criticize Muslim rulers for violating the sharia. Ah. That is khuruj. Wow. Really? So uh, you don't know the hadith? So I'm going to come for that. So example, judge, don't judge, criticize rulers for building polytheistic temples. Whenever you listen to compassionate imam or a madkhali, don't be tricked by the traditional Islamic concept he uses to decorate a speech. Look at the underlying agenda. Muslims across the world must, take, must make a choice. Listen to this now. I love this. When someone says, you have to eat either burgers or pizza. What about pasta? I know Daniel likes pasta. Remember your... Uh, 
uh, what is that podcast with the Andalusi guy, which which I have something to say about, inshallah, in a separate video, huh? Do you remember that that you love pasta so much? You like Italian cuisine? Why does it have to be either a burger or falafel? So because you're gonna tell me pizza is, is Italian. It's either A or B. What about C or D? Or no, no, no. According to him, A and B. And are his followers intelligent enough to say, hey, brother, are there other options? Nope, there are no other options. They all submit to the Grand Daniel. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. A, abandon the Sharia. B, abandon the compassionate Imams and the Madakhils. Or Madkhalis. Sorry, Madkhalis. So you cannot possibly, according to him, you cannot possibly want the Sharia and then be a so called Madkhali. So I, according to him, don't want Sharia. I want a secular state. I want other than the law of Allah to rule the, the land. And I challenge him to find a single incident where I said that. And I challenge him to find a single incident from Knowledge North or Sajid Lipam or uh, uh, Umar Shatila where any one of us ever said that by Allah, by Allah. If you don't bring this evidence, you are a liar. You are doing exactly what these compassionate imams, and in my book, you are a comp not a compassionate imam. You are a radical imam. I'm not. I'm not saying radical in the sense that you want to think that I'm trying to get you in trouble. No, brother, I don't want to get you in trouble. But believe me, that is a radical position to hold. That is an extreme. Let's just say you're extreme imam. That's an extreme imam because you're claiming that all of us. Who is a madkhali to you? Sajid Lipam, Omar Shatila. Abu Mus'ab Wajdi Akkari, Faris uh, uh, Hamadi. Those are the names that are public and known. There are other people behind the scene which may not be as known, which you include in the, in the mix. Obviously, all the, the spubs and all of the Salafi, you know, Salafi people. According to you, you lie against the entire, an entire group, uh, uh, faction of Muslims. A denomination of Muslims and you claim that all of us want to eradicate the Sharia. Ya kaddab. <laughs> the same things you were saying to others, Wallahi, you are guilty of ya kaddab. You will not find a single evidence. And do you think any of his followers will even say, uh, Daniel, can you please substantiate this claim of yours with an evidence? Do they even ask for that? No. Why? They've been brainwashed. The only thing they get asked to do, which they happily do, is if you want to have a super chat, visit the muslimskeptic.com and fill out the form for a donation. You have to pay money to chat with the dude. You got to pay money. And the longer the live stream, the more the dinero, baby, the bigger the bank account. It's a big business, mashallah, tabarakallah. Huh? Uh, and a slander against an entire denomination of Muslims who we don't call ourselves Madkhalis, but we know whom, whom he is referring to, the Salafis fundamentally. Or he's going to tell you, no, the Madkhalis are not real Salafis. The Madkhalis are uh, uh, an, an offshoot of Salafiyya who are extra uh, careful about the Gulf rulers specifically. Let's agree. If we want to agree hypothetically about this defin definition of yours, because I know that that would be your response, you still just claim that all of us want to eradicate the Sharia. And I challenge you, I challenge you before the people to bring on an, a single evidence where any one of us has ever done that. And you will not be able to do so, buddy. That's why I replied and I said, the difference which we, you intentionally hide from your gullible fans is that there are over a hundred hadith regarding how to deal with the rulers, whereas we all agree about refuting and calling out the evil callers to Islam. I don't want to call them compassionate imams because these are his terms. How can you treat those two camps the same? Where is justice? Then I proceeded to actually quote a number of evidences from the Prophet wasallam, And I believe a lot of the people don't even know. A lot of the people don't even know these uh, references. Let me quote them here. I think it's in the replies. I've visited page. All right. Forget about this, Yasser Qadi. Here. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Listen to the ruler and obey him when it is hard for you and when it is easy for you, whether you are pleased or displeased, and when others are given preference over you." And even when they consume your wealth and beat your back. Oh, 
What are you going to do with this hadith, Daniel? Because everybody's saying, no, ya akhi, this is for the ruler who, who rules by the book of Allah, who rules by the sharia. If he's ruling by the book of Allah, the sharia, then why would he be doing all this to you? He's going to be a just imam. He's going to be an imam on adil. He has to be a, an imam on jair for this even to apply to him. One, Muslim, reported from Abu Huraira, the Prophet ﷺ said, You are obliged to listen to the ruler and obey him in times of ease and in times of hardship, whether you are pleased or displeased, and even when another person is given preference over you. Ibn, Al -Ibn Asim, Ibn uh, Abil Asim reported in the Sunnah from Adi ibn Hatim that the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, Messenger, he said, that we said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we do not ask you regarding the obedience regarding obedience to the ruler who has taqwa, <laughs> who is pious and who fears Allah, and is good and rectifies. Rather, we are asking you about the ruler who does such and such and such and such. And he mentioned their evil traits, evil, evil traits. So the Prophet wasallam said, answered, fear Allah, listen to the ruler and obey him. So when, when all of these things are happening in the Muslim world, and we are simply adhering to those statements of the Prophet ﷺ who told us to listen and obey. And he told us in another narration that if we want to criticize him, then we take him by the side and we do so privately. And in the hadith which says that the best jihad is the one where you say as a word of truth, عِنْدَ Sultan عِنْدَ at when you are عِنْدَ meaning you are physically there with him which happened by some of the Sahaba and some of the Salaf where they rectified the person in charge when they were in his presence and the occasion allowed it. So we say to Daniel, you have a problem with the Gulf rulers? Book a ticket, ya akhi. you're American, right? Americans can go anywhere they want in the world. Tafaddal, ya akhi. come all the way here and go speak to whoever you want to speak to. Go tell him to his face. Go to the Emirat and tell them to their face your concerns and your problems. If you're such a brave, uh, brave lion of the ummah, what are you waiting for? Oh, oh, you can't. Oh, it's convenient to stay in Houston, in a cozy place under the air condition, and then talk smack about everything that's happening on the other side of the world. While we are living in peace by Allah's grace and mercy, these are considered some of the most secure and, and, and peaceful places in the world. By Allah's grace. Why? Because the fitna of, of revolting against the rulers and criticizing them in public has been eradicated from the ground up. And that's why we are living in peace. When the Muslims wanted to be, you know, machos, Allah, Allah, Sheikh, Allah, this ruler, uh, this, uh, Saddam, this, and uh, the one of Libya, Qadhafi is this, and Fulan, uh, what was the one in Egypt? I forgot his name. But they went out, look what happened. The Arab Spring, or the Arab Blood, Springs of Blood. Until now, until now, the people are in, 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 in tears, in pain, destroyed families. Nothing was gained. Wallahi, nothing was gained from this drama except harm upon the Muslims. And one Muslim is more, is, is more, more virtuous and more important in, in, in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal than the entire Kaaba. And you, don't, you guys don't care. You just want to run your big fat mouths with your gigantic tongues and speak all kinds of smack. And you think that criticizing is not the same as khuruj? What do you think led to khuruj? What did Dhul Khuwaisira begin with? The first thing Dhul Khuwaisira did is he came to the Prophet and said, Ya Muhammad, i'dil fa'innaka lam ta'dil. Oh Muhammad, be just, you were not just. That is the public criticism that you're talking about. And from him came the Khawarij who thought that Uthman was evil and Abu Bakr was evil and Umar was evil and they fought against all the Khulafa and all the Sahaba and they killed them. And they, and they, they drew, they were drawing nearness to Allah by killing the companions of the Prophet ﷺ because to them they were not up to the standard. Wallahi, the same trade that you guys have today. You want the people in charge today to be like at the time of the Sahaba. Wallahi, if they were the Sahaba, you would not be pleased. Wallahi, you would not be pleased. You dismiss all the good that's happening. And I've never defended anyone, by the way. All I do is keep quiet. But, but let's, let's, let's just be a little honest. All these hujjaj who come here and, and get served. You know how many open heart surgeries have happened in Mecca for people that cannot afford it back home? How much money has been given to Muslim countries that are in need? You're going to speak about the war in this country, war that country. You're not a politician. 
You don't understand politics and it's none of your business. Allah will not hold you accountable. There are things that you just don't know. Your job is to be quiet. Because the Prophet ﷺ told you to be quiet. Here, whoever sees from his leader something that he dislikes, then let him be patient with him. Because whosoever separates from the jama'ah, the body of Muslims in a country, even by a hand span, and then dies in that condition, he will die the death of pre-Islamic ignorance. I will give you the glad tiding, ya, ya Daniel, you and your followers. If you were to be in a Muslim country, all of you will die the di death of a jahiliyyah. You guys are living in the land of kufr. And the tax money you pay goes to the same country, the, the same government that is attacking Muslims. And you sit there and make fun of the Afghani girl. You make fun of her because you don't want uh, you know, the US to do anything and you are paying them taxes and you know where the tax money goes. Yeah, akhi, the hypocrisy is unprecedented. Mr. Suhaib number two. If y'all came here, you would all die, die the death of jahiliyyah. Because you're not going to give no bay'ah. You're not going to obey. You're going to sit there and run your mouth and talk smack all day. Thinking that, you know, the people are going to believe you. And if the people believed you, they, you will be inciting revolution. You will be inciting, you will be promoting khuruj. You're opening the door for khuruj. And that's how khuruj begins with criticism. Criticism. Oh, we, we were only talking about Halloween. Uh, talking about Halloween, you, you made uh, half of the Muslim world hate a, a particular country and have enmity. Do you, can you control these stupid followers of yours? That none of them will come here and try to uh, blow himself up fi sabilillah because he believes that these rulers are kuffar. Look, look at the tweets. Look at the tweets. Read the tweets between me and the people. I'm a kafir and this ruler is a kafir and fula by name. They call them by name. All these are tawagheed kuffar. Which is your position as well as far as I'm concerned. That's not takfir. That's not khuruj. How do you think violence happens? It's a byproduct of this stupidity. Because you don't hold back. You want to fight everybody. Compassionate imams. Madkhalis. Wah, wah, wah. Just zip it man. Zip it. Because you don't know what you're talking about. You're an ignoramus. You're ignorant. You're ignorant about those ahadith. And your followers are more ignorant than you. Actually, you're not ignorant of these hadith because I'm sure they were shared with you. They were shared with you by those who cared about you. But you don't tell your followers. Look, you made in your, your, your uh, tweet, madkhalis and compassionate imams, they want to eradicate sharia. Why? Because the madkhalis say you cannot criticize the ruler because that is a type of khuruj. What do, you, what do you say about this hadith? This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim from uh, Ibn Abbas. He said, uh, where is it? Oh, the one I just quoted earlier. Naam, which is the Mawtat al jahiliya Muslim also reported from Anas. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, we will see, you will see after be severe preferential treatment. So be patient until you meet Allah and you meet his messenger at the drinking lake, al hawt So they responded, we shall be patient. Just for the record, there is an ijma' mentioned by a Razi and a couple of other scholars. Ijma' among the Ummah that it is prohibited to revolt and to do khuruj and to go against the Muslim rulers with a lot of details. Shaykh Rasul Tamiya said, being patient with the tyranny, tyrannical tyranny, not a ruler who's calling you to Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Being patient with the tyranny, tyranny of the rulers is a fundamental principle, asl. From the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Look at these guys. These are, this, is, this guy's name is Abu Ayah. <laughs> is that Malcolm X? <laughs> Dhukuri, Sharqi, Mutatarrif. Mutatarrif, by the way, I don't know if he's playing words. It's supposed to be Mutatarrif, which means he's radical. He's a male. Sharqi Orientalist, or from, uh, yani, or from the uh, East, I'm sorry, from the East. Uh, no, West, Gharb, eh, no, East, yeah. And Mutatarrif, I don't know what he means by that. Either way, look at this. These are the memes of the day. Watching Murtad Zindik doxing the H family, Compassion Imam Madkhaliz. Watching the H win every government. Yeah, if you read all of this Zubala, 
that his, his followers uh, spam us with. Look at this genius. I choose option B. Option B, any day of the week, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to waste any more time. I've shown you enough. Wallahi, these are only four narrations out of a hundred, around a hundred hadith that speak about... I should mention the other hadith. Wait, wait, wait. I need to get you the other hadith. Uh, that is... That is a hadith that you need to know. Qulubuhum, Qulub Shayateen, I believe the hadith says. Aywa. Right there. Naam, huh? The hadith, the famous hadith of Hudayfa. Qultu ya Rasulallah. Inna kunna bishar. He said, Oh, Masjid Allah, we used to be in, you know, at, at, in the times of evil. Faja Allahu bi khair. Allah brought good. Fanahnu fi. We're in this good. Fahal min wara'i hadha al khair. Shar. Will there be after this goodness that we are living and experiencing any evil? Qala na'am. The Prophet said, Yes. Qultu hal wara'a dhalika al shar khair. Will there be any good after that evil? Qala na'am. He said, Yes. قلت فهل وراء ذلك الخير شر حذيفة رضي الله عنه was known for for always worrying about the fitan and being extra careful رضي الله عنه وارضاه will there be after that good any evil قال نعم he said yes قلت كيف he I said how قال يكون بعد يا إما they will be after me يا إما لا يهتدون بهداي إمامز who will not guide by my guidance ولا يستنون بسنتي nor will they follow my sunnah their sunnah will not be my sunnah وسيقوم فيهم رجال and they will be men among them قلوبهم قلوب الشياطين their hearts are the hearts of the devils في جثمان إنس in the bodies of humans قال قلت كيف أصنع يا رسول الله he said how should I behave what should I do a message of Allah إن أدركت ذلك if I reach that قال تسمع وتطيع للأمير الله أكبر he said, you listen and you obey the Amir, the prince, the, the ruler, the person in charge. وَإِنْ ضَرَبَ ظَهْرَكْ وَأَخَذَ مَالَكْ فَأَسْمِعْ وَأَطِعْ Even if he was to strike your back and take your money, listen and obey. So for all of you who claim that the, uh, the person in charge has to be some upright Muslim for all of these hadith to apply, take that and add that to your, you know, <laughs> to your archive of information to prove to you the level of ignorance that you guys are involved in yet you dare to pass takfir against your fellow muslims and you don't fear allah fear allah fear allah those imams look at their description they don't follow the guidance of the they don't follow the sunnah they have the hearts of devils and the bodies of humans you are commanded to obey and listen even if we're to strike your back and take your wealth you listen and you obey so you are going to call us bootlickers and agents because we are applying this hadith and those other hadith. Our crime is that we are following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. You don't want to agree with it? Go ahead, be a kharijji all you want. Be a kharijji all you want. But I will remind you, the kharijis back then used to call people that were not khawarij like them to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do you call them? Murji'ah, people that are not really, you know, people who don't believe that deeds are connected to Iman. From Irja is to postpone. So they used to call them names back then and that justified killing them and y'all doing the same thing. You guys are justifying the same thing. You, call, you claim that we don't have true Iman. We're hypocrites like this lady on Twitter who has no problem. She used to follow me. Now she follows Ahmed Musa Jibreel. And naturally, naturally, I'm a hypocrite to her. And she's ready to meet Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and prove that I'm a hypocrite. For what? What did I do that is hypocrisy? All I'm doing is following these ahadith. This is our only crime, quote unquote. We're following the hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Nothing more, they say, you keep defending, you keep defending, you will see that there's absolutely no defense. In my entire da'wah career, I've never said, even when, when something good happens here, I usually don't even put it out to the public. Like I saw that they were going to give $15 billion to Pakistan to help them with this, I don't even like to, to, to push that. Or something about, uh, you know, 
the crown prince not wanting to support uh, uh, Israel on a particular thing or they're not going to allow some. I don't know what it is. I don't even promote things that may appear to be good because I am a neutral person. So when you claim that I am defending Fulan and defending Fulan, you are also slandering and you are transgressing and you don't fear Allah because there's no defense. All I'm doing is سمعنا وأطعنا, keep my mouth shut. Why? I want to meet Allah Azza wa Jal with no blood on my hand. Which is the same position of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Which is the same position of, uh, of the Sahaba. When the fitna started happening, uh, the, the wise ones and the smart ones, and they're all, the, the others one, they're all, they're all smart. But some of them, let me take that back. The ones who weren't uh, 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 reckless, they, they played it safe. And the other ones did their ishtihad and they're all maghfur lahum. The sahaba are all udul and they're all mujtahideen and all the, whatever good they have done will erase whatever bad they have done. So we believe all the sahaba are, are righteous people. So when the differing happened between the sahaba. But the ones who were following the sunnah are those who actually did not want to be involved in anything that will harm the Muslims. This is our position. If that makes us bootlickers and that makes us government agents, then... I am warning you of the wrath of Allah in the dunya and in the akhirah. And if Allah Azza wa Jal lets you escape in the dunya, you will not be able to escape in the akhirah because it involves our rights. It involves our rights because you are transgressing and slandering us with unjustified, unsubstantiated claims. For me to be an agent, there are certain prerequisites, which I don't have and I'm not. I'm not. For me to be bootlicker, I need to even, I don't even know the names of the people in charge. Do you know? Minus the ones whose names I know because of how often people put them in the tweet. Wallahi, I don't even know the names. I've never known the names of the people in charge, who was the prince or who was the king. I don't know the names. I'm not into politics. I mind my business, I keep to myself. How in the world am I going to be a government agent? Ya kadab. Ala kulli hal. وَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَجْتَمِعُ الْخُصُومِ In front of Allah, all of these fights and differing will be settled. So you could be a brave macho man and you could run your mouth now, but believe me, you will regret and you will remember this, this talk if you heard it. You will remember this talk, inshallah, that you were warned by a sincere brother who wants goodness for you and everybody, wallahi. You will be warned. Beginning with you, Daniel, and then moving on to your, you know, amazing, amazing fans and followers. All of you have been warned. You specifically because you bear the sin of all of these who follow you, whom you never advise and you're not qualified to be teaching them about these matters. You want to teach them about how to, uh, you know, debate or not even debate, how to, uh, you know, uh, dismantle uh, feminists. Zakallah khair. Knock yourself out. But don't involve yourself in this other business and don't talk about us anymore because it is not good for you. Not in the dunya nor in the akhirah. This is a sincere advice from a brother who used to appreciate your work and still appreciates aspects of your work. But unfortunately, the level of violations and oppression and transgression will dismiss all of your good, make you not worthy of being promoted anymore, even though at some point more than one person promoted you. Just think about that. Think about why would multiple people turn around and stop promoting you. It cannot be that the issue is with us. The issue has to be with you. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد والله المستعان